Hi, Michelle here again for another episode of Did You Know? Today I am thinking about birds yet again because I have been hearing the flock of parrots lately just flying around and around and around and squawking, squawking, squawking with all of their bird vocalizations and I was thinking back on a story I heard, or I looked up a while back, um, wondering where they came from. They don't seem like a Southern California bird. Um, and I remember first reading that they were, the flock started by some escape, the, they escaped or people let them out or something like that. So I started doing some research again to see well, what is the story behind that flock of parrots. And I found an article in, I think, the Daily Breeze from 1985, and they were really roosting in Manhattan Beach. And the residents were not happy because those birds are very noisy. And they wanted to try to figure out how to get rid of them, um, how to relocate them. And so the, the article explained how to do that, on how you can either try to catch them um, or how to scare them away. Um, because there's no safe way to really trap them with like a like a tranquilizer because if you have a bird fall asleep in the air they're just gonna fall to the ground and they're not gonna survive so I thought that was really interesting um, but they didn't get into detail on how the birds came to the South Bay and Southern California so I did some more poking around and of course there's all kinds of cool stories. There's stories about um, a pet store being on fire and so the firefighters decided to let the birds go. Um, there was one where, uh, oh, like it was illegal to sell these birds um, and so the police were about to get on this like catch these people who have were gonna sell the birds and instead of getting caught they had released all the birds um, and through some more research what I learned through a website called California parrots dot us um, is that none of those are true because those stories involve birds that are domesticated are um, companion birds and those bird that bird species is different than the wild birds so they, they can they know that this is not true because of the kinds of species that are thriving in the wild I think there's only something like five of the parrot species that are, do really well in the wild and the kind you get at the pet store they don't do well in the wild because they were not raised in the wild and they didn't have their parents showing them how to survive in the wild. So they don't do very well um, if they are released. Um, it is definitely thought that, that they could be released because the birds are loud and people don't realize, I think, how loud and annoying they could be as a pet. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive. So people might think that this is gonna be a cool pet and then they decide, ah, oh, no, I'm gonna let them go. It's actually they don't have a high survival rate if you do that. So be very ten intentional about the pets you are going to get. Um, I digress, anyway. Um, yes, I don't know. I guess I was thinking that there's, there's, it's really cool to hear urban legends and different stories and kind of have this mystery around what you think is happening or things you hear. And then it's a, it's a very important layer to get down to the facts and what actually makes sense. Like as a historian, the, f the fact that um, the science is showing us that the birds the specific species aren't going to live in the wild makes it me feel like that story is more credible. That um, is not just a made up fantasy story that feels good to share and talk about um, and get excited about and spend energy on. So um, I don't know, there's just a balance of 
what is true, what is fun and exciting, and in this world of the internet and the constant news and just oversharing and sharing and sharing and sharing, um, it can be very easy to go down um, a path that maybe is not as accurate. So connecting it all back to nature and your health and your mental health, all of that, my tip of the day is to, when you hear something that you're not so sure about, something I've always asked students is, where did you get that information from? That's step one, right? Figuring out what, where did it come from? Um, and then what biases does that person have? Where did that person get the information from? What, what was the resource? Um, is it another story, story, story passed along? Um, were they right there? Um, I don't know. Keep rambling. That's my two cents for the did you know, did you know those wild parrots are actually, oh, I never got to that part. They are, have, they've been documented to being here since the 1960s and they're believed to be here around the 40s um, and that they could have naturally migrated here, um, but what's most likely is one of the things that could have happened is that people caught the birds in the wild in their in their native habitat and brought them here before it was illegal and the birds either escaped or were let go so it wasn't that they were domesticated birds it was that they were wild birds uh, caught in the wild and then somehow made it here and then they can thrive in the wild because that's what they were already doing beforehand. So, did you know that is where those loud squawking parakeets in the South Bay have come from? So, they've been in Hermosa a couple days ago and I don't hear them anymore, so they've probably moved around and maybe you'll hear them soon. And you can make up your own story on how they got out, on how they got there, because um, that's kind of fun to do. And you can do your own research too and decide as a historian what makes the most sense to you and why. There you go.